Hi everyone, my name is Michelle. I run a food blog, No Sweet Sour, where I share um, stories and the food and recipes from different regions of China, especially from my hometown, Yunnan province. Um, at the moment, I'm also planning on opening a restaurant that's, that's focusing on serving Yunnan cuisine, together with uh, Christopher Hotuft. Um, I'm very, very excited to be here today. Thanks for Smarke of Shesten for inviting me to show you um, of uh, di two different recipes of how I would use uh, Norwegian seafood. So the first recipe I'm going to show you is a fish dumpling. Uh, I'm going to use a sai fish. Here's about 150 grams of uh, sai fish. Um, that, that I use the fillet and I have chopped it up into somewhat fine and crossy kind of um, bits. And for the mixing, I have uh, green onion and shiitake, fresh shiitake mushroom. I only use the stem, uh, the stem part, not uh, the umbrella part. And for the last ingredients, main ingredients here, I also have um, pork fat um, because, um, because fish has a lot of protein. Uh, so you, if you make a fish dumpling, it often results into some kind of dry mouthfeel. So adding a little bit of pork fat will uh, balance the um, fattiness inside the dumpling. It will give like more juicy moisture uh, results. So to start, I'm going to add salt, about half teaspoon, and pepper, same amount. This is a uh, egg white, one egg white. Um, this is a Japanese uh, sake. Uh, normally, we use um, cooking wine, which is called Shaoxing wine for Chinese cooking, for um, marinating. It helps to take away the fishiness of um, seafood. Um, Shaoxing wine is very difficult to source in Norway, so normally I use um, sake or uh, dry sherry as a substitute. And I'm also going to add a half tablespoon of oyster sauce. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to blend all of the ingredients together, stirring by only one direction. So don't stir different directions, just one direction give a nice blend. So for the dumpling wrapper, I'm selecting this brand, uh, which is made a little bit thicker, that are more for ch like Chinese water boiled dumplings. And there's another types that you can find that's called the Jiuza uh, wrapper. These wrappers are a bit thinner than the one that I'm using today. Um, you can also make your own dumpling wrapper if you wish. Uh, simply by mixing, for example, if you use um, 250 gram of flour, then you can add 2.5 gram of salt plus 110 to 115 gram of water. Um, you make it dough and then you let the dough rest for 10 minutes. You knead it again and you let the dough rest for 40 minutes before use. So to wrap the dumplings, you can take one piece of the wrapper and you will notice that one side has less starch while the other side has a lot of starch. So you want to use the side that has less starch to wrap the dumpling with. Um, take a small half tablespoon amount of the filling in the middle. The 
then use one finger, dip some water, and wet the edges. And lift it up and hold it up like this. So what you do now is you work from the left side towards the middle. You take one fold, pinch, take a second one towards the middle, pinch, take a third one towards the middle, and then pinch like this. And then once you have three or four folds, you can work on the other side. So when you fold, try to lift up the wrappers on the same level um, as all the three folds. In this way, you can get a very neat dumpling. And after this, you can reshape it a little bit, pinch it tightly together. So okay, to cook the dumplings, um, today I'm going to pan fry them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll add enough of oil that covers uh, the bottom of the frying pan. So I'm going to start with a medium low heat. Place the dumplings inside. So slowly you will see the dumpling uh, the oil start to bubbling up on, uh, underneath the dumplings. Um, you can lift it up to, to check the button. It needs to be becoming like a golden color. So when the button becomes like this, it's time to add water. You want to add enough hot water so it covers one third of the dumpling. Cover with the lid and let it steam for four to five minutes. And you can check the water level after two to three minutes mark. If there's still some water left, you can just cover and continue to let it steam. All right, so now they're finished the cooking. Um, to serve them, to pick them out. So to serve, I've prepared a little bit of dipping that is made with one tablespoon of light soy sauce and one tablespoon of apple vinegar, plus thinly sliced ginger. This is going to give a nice umami flavor plus uh, acidity to balance the fl uh, flavors and a little bit of spiciness uh, kick from the ginger. All right, so for the second dish, I want to show you a classic Sichuanese cuisine, which is called water-boiled fish. Um, so this is a technique by um, cooking the thinly slices the fish, uh, simmering it in a fish broth, then finally cover it with a layer of beautiful red chili pepper. So the dish is very, um, very fragrant, very tender and umami at the same time. It's a flavor explosion. Um, it's one of the dishes, like fish dishes that I like the most. Um, so we're going to start by, um, I've already done that. This is uh, about 250 gram of stem bit. I've thinly sliced them into about two to three centimeter thick slices, like this. So I'm going to marinate it first. Um, I will need a little bit of salt, about half teaspoon. And same amount of pepper. 
And I need uh, some sake or Shaoxing wine if you are able to source it. This is leaking, so okay, I think I've got enough. <laughs> And I need uh, about half egg white. So this is a liquid mixed by one tablespoon of cornstarch together with 20 milligram water. Just going to... I will need about one third of this. So, and then afterwards, I'm going to mix everything together. By stirring, you will see that the egg liquid is disappearing and the water as well, the starch water. So it means that the water has been absorbed by the fish. like this, and then I will set it aside to rest for about 10-15 minutes. I'm going to use a saucepan, and I will heat up the saucepan with uh, one tablespoon of oil. So I'm going to saute the bean sprouts. You want to cook this until it's just gotten softened but not completely soggy yet. So when you see the white color has disappeared from the bean sprouts, now you can turn off the heat and move them on, into a bowl like this size, a little bit deeper. So now we're going to make the fish broth. You want to return to your wok, heat it up uh, over medium flame add about two tablespoon amount of oil. So here I have uh, thinly sliced the garlic, thinly sliced the ginger, one green onion, and this is a, a Sichuanese chili paste called Pi Xian Dou Ban. Um, if you can't source this, you can substitute it with um, other type of chili paste from Ha Ha brand, for example. So I'm going to add the green onion. You want to fry this over medium low flame until the chili color, the red oil color is starting to release and you can smell the amazing aroma. And then you want to add about 400 milligram of hot water. Here I've got some uh, fish fin and the fish bone from the stein bit. I'm going to add this in. Now I will let this cook for about five to eight minutes. So now after six minutes of boiling, let's check it out. It's bubbling and it smells amazing in here. Just going to move this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of the solid contents inside of the brush. So you can season the broth with uh, salt, pepper, and sugar. After this, you want to bring the broth down to simmering like this, just a little bit bubbling. What I'm going to do now, when the broth is bubbling just like this, I'm going to add the fish slices. And make sure you separate them after you drop them in the broth so they don't stick together. You want to cook this over a low flame. In about one minute, you will see that the fish has curled up and the color has becoming uh, white. It has lost its transparent uh, look. So you want to bring it to a boil over low flame. Right now I can see the bubble is coming up. 
Once you see that it has become uh, bubbling, uh, boiling, let it continue to cook about one minute. And then you prepare the bowl where you have placed the bean sprouts underneath. So now when the fish is done, you can turn off the heat and use a strainer. Gently take out the fish and place them onto the plate. And then afterwards, pour over the broth. Almost done, one last step. So now we're on the last step. Um, you can start by turning on the heat and going back on the high heat. You want about 100 milliliter oil. You want to heat up the oil until about 160, 180 degrees. Normally you can start to see almost there's white smoke coming up. I'm going to add the red chili. Give a quick, quick stir and garlic. And before everything becomes overcooked, I pour it over. Voila, 